Good evening. Good evening, everybody. How Good are you? Good evening, everybody. You smell of poo. How are you all? Is this going on podcast too? Always does. So if you wine o'clock is what we do, spelt W H I N E, when we can't have a moan. When we can't have a moan, we moaning. have a wine. We have a wine. And sometimes she has a glass of wine. And I would love to have a glass of wine, but I haven't got any. Well, that's a shame. How come? I know, it's so annoying. And I'd like a coffee, but you won't let me. No. So, not at this go. time of night. All in all, what the hell is there to look forward to when you haven't got wine or coffee? Not an awful lot. Each other's company. But we're not really enjoying that either, are we? I mean, in terms of, you know, doing stuff. Don't be an arsehole. I'm not being an arsehole. You are. Why is anything I say arsehole? Well, wait, only when you're arsehole I'm not being an arsehole. Sure, oh. Buffering, or is it just me? You shouldn't be buffering. It we might are be on, you, my darling. Are, it must be, must be your end. It's, it's, this is StreamYard through the VM. This is proper strong frozen. No. Let's have a look. I'm going to have a look on my phone because I can. He's not believing you guys. Nah. Good evening, guys. My hubby is mending the toilet, says no Nicola Harper. No way. Oh, is he good at DIY? No Do you way. want to do a husband swap? No, it's absolutely fine. It must be your end, I'm afraid. Do you See? want to do a little husband swap? I'm up for a wife swap. Come on, then. What were you talking about today? I thought we were husband swapping. What were we talking about today? We're talking about all sorts. Well, in You're fact, more on top of this than I am today. A lot of things that we're talking about today are a little bit sad, I'm afraid. So we're talking about Sinead O'Connor's funeral. Mm. Um, we're also talking about Sandra Bullock's uh, partner. Oh, my God. That's so sad. died so after a three-year battle. So sad. We're also looking at a place in the sun's... Uh, you know, what's his name? Johnny, Johnny Irwin. Johnny Irwin, who, mm. who posted today... Uh, well, just incredibly emotional post today, taking his kids to school for the last time. And he actually um, says that. He says, taking yeah. the kids to nursery last time, game face on. Yeah, so we're going to have a, have a just to a, uh, just a reflect on that. You know, we were talking the other day about gratitude. I have to say, every single story today has made me feel incredibly grateful. Mm. Um, and I didn't need to make a list to do that, unfortunately. I, I just felt it when I looked at each of these stories. Mm. Um, and towards the end, we're going to have a, a chat about Matt Hancock, um, who, uh, well, I mean, I can't quite believe it. I'm going to play something later. Um, and of course, just quickly, before we talk about anything, am I right in thinking, tra -la -la, did you say it's A-level results have been issued in Scotland yes. today? Yes, they have. Yeah. So there's a curious situation where grade inflation is being talked about. And they're talking about the fact that A-level grading is, is set to become a national scandal. We've talked about this in the past. This is about the idea that now that we are well past the pandemic, we can go down harder on how we mark stuff, which leads, obviously, all the newer, fresher generations thinking, how come they got it easier than us? It seems so, so arbitrary. It's so unfair. It seems so utterly arbitrary. I it's... just think it's really unfair on kids when, when... Because always... You know, the majority of kids put a lot of hard work and stress and worry. And it seems no matter what they do, that they're always their marks are demeaned. Well, there's always the suggestion by this chat about how they're yeah. fixing the marking or not. Uh, absolutely. Pupils next week will be feeling particularly uneasy as Ofqual, uh, England's exam regulator, attempts to curb what they call grade inflation and seeks to bring national figures back in line with pre-COVID levels, which has two effects. On the one hand, it will be a huge disincentivizing kind of whack in the face with a massive sort of, you know, salmon to all the kids that have passed through A-levels this year thinking, mm. oh my God, how hard am I going to be marked? And are they going to overstep the mark in, 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 you know, harshly grading us? And then retrospectively, it's going to make everyone who got their grades in the pandemic feel like charlatans. Isn't it? I mean, that's, that, you know... I just don't think they think enough about the actual effect on young people's mental health when they're just sort of battered around like this. It, it just strikes me as odd it's that so marking depressing. is arbitrary and it's not fixed. I know, you've either got it right or wrong. That's what I mean. I but they it. give more leeway. They say, I think it goes along the lines of, well, I don't know, maybe they allow more marks for spelling mistakes mm. and minor, minor mistakes. Whereas if they were being stricter, they would be, you know, mm. it'd be past receive. 
Um, Bellex, it's cruel the leaving certificate in Ireland. Uh, they gave them a really hard high maths exam. Why would you do that? Higher maths is impossible at the best of time. No, this isn't about, I don't agree, jogging jelly. Yes, there's always stories about whether it's getting easier or not easier and all that kind of stuff. I think we're in a definite situation here where when, when youngsters hear the stories mm. that the authorities are going to come harder on, on are going to get, you know, we're going to award fewer firsts or A's or fewer. You either got it right or you haven't got it right. I think kids have just got it. They've just got to, yeah, just 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 try as hard as they can not to listen. Yeah. You, you know, you've done your best. You've tried your hardest. And it's always being whipped up, isn't it, into yeah, some exactly. sort of dramatic frenzy. Um, obviously, the big news today, uh, as I was saying, was Sinead O'Connor's funeral. Um, and I just wanted to play you this film, which was the first thing I saw this morning, uh, and this was a film created by a sort of media, an Irish media company. I'm presuming or guessing that they, they may have worked with Sinead, not necessarily, but they're a sort of creative agency. And they created this, uh, which just, uh, The Tenth Man is the name of the organization. Um, and Let's find this it gets back. It was her funeral today, and obviously, I'm just going to show you some of the photographs from it. Um, huge crowds were out, um, wow. paying their paying their respects. And again, it just reminded me of that idea that I think Morrissey and a number of other people were talking about, which was you know um, the adulation she didn't receive. <laughs> Prior to this, it's it is odd, isn't but it? But in I'm Ireland, not... she did. I mean, in yeah. Ireland, she did. She was she was she was valued, wasn't she? In Jennifer Ireland, Winter. Yeah. If only people stood up for her in her life, not mm. only in her death. Um, got some that amazing photograph there. Uh, um, and there's the obviously the hearse. People paying their respects with flowers. Um, Incredibly moving, incredibly moving images. That's Bob Geldof. Uh, oh. You two were also there too. Um, obviously people in the crowd, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that in a moment. So it's just, uh, she was valued in Ireland, Nadia, says Pauline. Marvel. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She was. And I think it is a nation in mourning. I'm having a drink for Sinead. It says, good ship lollipop. It is wine o'clock. Absolutely. Mm. I watched. It was very emotional, Hazel Melbourne. I think if there's one thing for me that comes out of this whole thing is that, um, it, reminds us not to be so judgy of people whose behaviour doesn't marry... Or fall into line. Yeah, with the status quo or the mainstream or, you know, what, what the majority think. I wonder think. what, because obviously it was a private ceremony, I wonder what religion it was, if there was one. Yes, because she, she moved... It was, to, to Islam. She was, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether she was still a Muslim when she died, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's lovely that it's all kept private because there was so much of her life put out there wasn't there yeah, um, yeah. Siobhan Jordan says Rastafarian music was epic um, I'm that... thinking of her siblings you know who went through so much you know when you when you read her about her life and what it was like as a child hmm. I was saying I was telling Kay the other day she was like God I had absolutely no idea you know this how awful that child it Muslim was Muslim funeral yeah. and um, and for her siblings you know not only if they lost their sister, but can you imagine the memories that that's going to be bringing up? One can only imagine. It's just so lovely for them that it was just a really private ceremony where yeah. they could just, yeah, absolutely. Siobhan remember Jordan, Siobhan Jordan. She spoke for so many of us. Muslim-led ceremony. Mm. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's just yeah. I just hope there's more. Tolerance. I wonder what it was that drew her to Islam. I don't know. I've never read anything about that or seen an interview. I don't know what it was in no. particular. What was the no. The you know the epiphany. No, absolutely, yeah. I don't either. I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, quite uh, apparently the crowds uh, the crowd started singing, didn't they? Nothing compares to you. Oh, she, don't let me cry. As soon as you said that potential. song, it makes yeah. me well up. Yeah, yeah, it's just something about it, and I think because we've all learned so much more about her and about her beginnings, and you know, mm. as I said the other day on Coffee Money, hadn't it, that I read that her brother had said. He hasn't. He he hasn't been able to listen to it for years because he knows where all that pain comes from when she sings it. And I'm just thinking. Yeah. And so now it just makes me well up every time I hear it. Yeah. Because there's so much sadness, and yet 
the talent and the voice that came from that suffering is, is just encapsulated in that song, isn't it? And in that performance. Absolutely. And as Vicky Waiting, the Candle Lady, reminds us, Prince's lyrics are just beautiful, obviously written by Prince. Mo yeah. Power says she's read the Koran and it made sense to her. Oh, it's just as simple as that. There you go. There, was, there wasn't a no other. No. Wow. Wow. Good for her. And in other sort of news that seem, you know, is 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 everywhere really sadly today, Sandra Bullock. Who, I had no idea of no, this. Well, so I, no, one, idea. one thing I did know that Sandra Bullock kind of made a statement not that long ago. I think it was about a year, a year maybe not even a year ago, formally stating that she uh, she was kind of stepping back from acting duties and taking on big roles. And I've always really liked Sandra if, if, Bullock. I've if, always liked Sandra, Sandra Bullock. I love Bullock. her in interviews. Mm. I think she's, you know, that down to earth is bandied about all the time. She always seems so down. Well, to she's earth. whip smart. Whip smart. She so doesn't funny. suffer fools gladly. She's been in the business. She knows the business inside out, upside down. She, she doesn't. You feel that she's got a handle on all that. Yeah, stuff. and I didn't even really know that she got married. She was she was single for a long time, wasn't she? And yeah. adopted a baby. Mm. And then I just opened up the news this morning and saw, you know, the tragic story that her, her partner. partner had died. Yeah, and that. Um, he was her real, true love. They've been married. For how, how long were they married for? Now? He was fifty-seven years old. Fifty-seven, uh, a model and um, an and actor, a photographer. photographer. Wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he was photographing her child's yeah. birthday. That's, right. That's how That's they right. met. Beautiful looking man. Looks well, let, just let like me, a movie on, star, doesn't he? Some, Absolutely uh, stunning. These, this was the l most recent photo of him, and I think one of the children, or maybe just a child in the but, background. But, um, but this was it, taken about two years ago. That one. But he had. ALS, and I thought, well, what is this? This whole article was like, it has ALS. I had no idea what it was. I looked up what it, and it was what Stephen Hawking had a kind of motor, very L rare. Gehrig disease, right? Very rare kind of, it's a motor neuron. Look at that. Hmm. Motor neuron is like a motor well, neuron. Well, I think it's, I think it's sort of colloquially called it is is it Lou Gehrig it's yes, it's yeah. amyotrophic lateral sclerosis yes. so it's like a a form of multiple sclerosis is it in some but very some extreme because mm. it I mean it starts doesn't it with like slurring speech mm. uh swallowing you know just 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 an just yeah very, it's a very type difficult. of muscular MND is that muscular dystrophy is it some form of it can be caused by Lyme's disease. I mean, I think one. I thought. I thought one of the things that was really oh tragic about God. this, and is a, again another reminder, and in a, in a weird way, it's a similar aspect, but not quite to the uh, to the Sinead O'Connor, is how private, you know, you or how little, yeah, how private you can be, and how little we did know, and how you know, even when she made the decision about her acting, I sort of, you know, one was left thinking, oh right, okay, I wonder why she's stepping back. I didn't think for a minute this was the reason. No. No idea. I have no comprehension. Motor neuron disease. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a motor yeah, neuron. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's very, very. I mean, it's just, it's just a terrible dog diagnosis, mm. isn't it? And it, you know, I was reading there is no cure. So when you're diagnosed, it, it's fatal. And it's, I yeah, think commonly it's, known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It affects nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord and causes the muscles responsible for controlling voluntary movement to waste away. There is no cure for ALS. Um, say, just very, tragically very rare. sad. Um, his yeah. family, his family shared it's with the greatest sadness that we share. Brian Randall passed away peacefully after a three-year battle. He chose to keep his journey with ALS private, and those of us who cared for him did our best to honour his request. We're immensely grateful to the tireless doctors who navigated the landscape of this illness with us, and to the astounding nurses who became our roommates, often sacrificing their own families to be with ours. All right, I know that there's somebody that I know that that is that is you know very 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 well known, and they and they were totally astonished and so pleased that they managed to get through all their cancer treatment mm. with nothing going out. Now they were using NHS hospitals. Mm. They weren't, you know, it wasn't like they were in that. private. And people respected that, but also, you know, there is. I can think of somebody else that is very, very famous, that within the business we all know that they, they have cancer and all the newspapers do know as well, but they don't they don't print it. No. And and Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. It just really it just I just find that so touching that mm. there is that kind of sometimes there is that respect and code of behaviour that that mm. it was the same with um who's it recently on um, the comedian. Oh, what's his name that we still don't know what he had. 
James Fox, and he was saying the miracle that it all managed to say private and how hard his family had worked because he really didn't want anyone to know what it was that he'd had. James Fox. Uh, James, Jamie okay. Fox? No, no uh, the comedian. He was, he's been ill recently. He was in hospital for weeks. They thought he was, um, there was all sorts of rumours actually that he'd die. What's his name? Did anyone know? Fox. Is Jam- Jamie Fox? Is it Fo- anyway, Jamie Fox? Anyway, I can't No, Jamie Fox is the actor. I can't remember, but, um, but it will okay. come to me. Well, what I thought was an interesting contrast, and that's not the reason why these, these stories have both popped up today, but it, it, it is an interesting contrast, is the desire and, um, you know, wish to be private yeah. going through something like this. And at the, other, uh, at the other end of the spectrum, in a sense, I was really captivated and uh, drawn to the Place in the Sun's uh, presenter, Johnny Irwin, who posted images today of him uh, taking his son to nursery for oh. what he describes as the last time amid his cancer battle. Um, I'm just going to show you the photos that he yeah. posted on his Instagram. This is him Sorry, taking it's his... Jamie Foxx. Let me just... Oh, oh right. He didn't Jamie have Fox. cancer. No, I didn't say cancer. She's been really ill recently and didn't want anyone to know. And oh, right. sorry, it's comedian. Yeah, sorry. Of saying yeah. how grateful he was that people had kept it private. Right, I see. Yeah. Um, these are the photos that he posted on his Instagram. Um, Johnny Irwin, obviously, there in the background. Uh, there he Game is. Game face on. Game face on. Taking his kids. There's, there, <sighs> there he is with his family. Um, it was interesting, actually, what he was saying about how he and his wife don't talk about it. Right. The only way that they've been able to deal with it is to not talk about it. Mm. So you know, he said, "We've now we've sorted out all the finances, we've done all the paperwork, mm. we've done." And he's just totally preparing for this, but they don't talk about it. They he's, just do what needs to be done and and, and move on. He's forty nine. He wrote on Instagram, "Last ever ride to nursery with Rex, suitably waved off by Rafa and his spade and Rex with his game face on." Oh, um, Johnny's followers credited his resolve. Someone stated, "You're an, an amazing human being." Uh, you put most of us to shame with your positive energy. Um, I love this quote here. He said in an interview recently, Johnny Owen, I encourage the kids. I'm positive about them and I give them cuddles. I've started to tell Rex in private conversations, you can do anything. He's bright. He's talented. Comes home from nursery, knowing more French than I do. I want them to have the confidence of a public schoolboy, but also be streetwise kids. They're happy. And it just, I don't know, this just made me really, again, it made me grateful. Off the back of the conversation we were having last week, this is one of those stories that makes you have gratitude. You know, this is when a story that hits the press and you could argue, you know, lots of people, oh, well, why are we focused? I think it gives you perspective, admiration. It makes you think about something that we actually are made and forced and almost are encouraged in our daily lives to not think about, which is death. And sometimes, I mean, I've spoken to death doulas, you know, what they try and do and what they help the families of people dying do is is embrace the way in which death is part of life and that there is as much to be learned from death in a positive way. I mean, it's that sort of really, it sounds a bit cliche, but it's that there was a lovely quote, I saw a meme somewhere today saying about trees look like they're dying in the autumn and then the leaves come back. And of course, it might not be us that comes back when we die, but we li- we do live on. And I, I just think, you know, these stories, these kind of stories, and I think it was really interesting that we have one story which has shocked the world because of the privacy with which Sandra Bullock had pursued it. We have another story here where Johnny Irwin has gone resolutely public and that, that impacts in a different way. And then you have another story where the entire world, it felt like, wanted to shy away from the trauma of a woman who was struggling with what it meant to be a human. Uh, and now she's no longer a human but lives on in her music, we suddenly, vast majority, numbers of us can suddenly find the time to say she's an absolute genius. You know, it's it's just, it makes you reflect. I thought these, really these three stories will make you reflect. And, and, you know, the as you guys know, you know, I've got a number of friends that are facing very difficult mm. cancer diagnosis and there is something just extraordinary mm. about seeing the way that they live in the moment, we know one particular friend of mine, she's the way she just takes joy from like, oh, I, I don't think I know a more joyful person. I mean, obviously life's very challenging with um, medication, and, but she just finds the joy. She can light up a room in two seconds. Mm. Um, you know, you know her guys, Hannah, mm. my friend Hannah, you know, she's 32, you know, she's got um, a beautiful little girl and 
she, it's it's just so much she's had to bloody deal with. And we all look at her and we go, we just constantly say, mm. Hannah, how do you? How do you? And she said, do you know what? She said to me the other day, she said, I've never, I've never been, she goes, I'm blessed because I've never been depressed. Mm. She said, I don't suffer with my mental health. She said, things can be so awful, but then I can turn around and something lovely happens and I'm so in the moment of that lovely thing happening, you know, and she's mm. got, you know, she's got stage, you know, she, well, it's, you know, it's not great. She's on a trial and we're really, really Fingers hopeful. Yeah. And yet she finds the joy all the time. And I do think of her often when I'm like, bemoaning something mm. Mm. and I think oh the way she just lights up a room is just yeah yeah and I, also, blessing. And, and I her, also think her, she is a blessing to yeah me. she's so lovely and I also think for everyone who's around someone who's going through something like what Hannah's going through I think there is it's weird because it's like even in talking about it there's there's the fear or the feeling that people are going to be like well that's a bit it is depressing, but it's also a necessary part of life. And it doesn't actually, there are ways of it not being as depressing if one can sort of shift perspective on it somewhat yeah. and learn from learn from the experiences of these people that, you know, that, that we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, for instance, with, 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 with Hannah, I never have felt depressed about, I'm so frustrated, I'm so angry with cancer and how brutal it can be and... But even Hannah will say she's also in awe of how, um, what is it she calls, she read somewhere, the emperor of all illnesses. It's mm. so clever. It's mm. so smart. And the way she talks about it is just. Beautiful. Yeah. It is beautiful. In, in, a, way, yeah, in a way, she does. Yeah. And she respects it. Yeah. And, and we all as her friends get so damn furious and we're just so frustrated and it's just so unfair. Yeah. And, but the way that she is always looking for the bright moments, like just. Makes us too. Creator Holo, come 59 and starting a two-year art course. Realise life's too short. It's now or never. We need to do what brings us joy. We don't know yeah. how long we've got. Yet don't live, don't be told how to live your life by anyone who who you don't respect or value because it's your life. It's not theirs. You might have an opinion on it, but it's their opinion. It's not theirs. Um, Jane Bentley, positive mental attitude is everything. My friend was given six weeks and went on for 52 weeks following her diagnosis. Hear that so many times. Absolutely, so often, hear that so many times. Absolutely, um, and there was a lovely quote Gloria's there. Gloria's daughter, C C Karen. You know Gloria Hannaford. Mm. She went on for years beyond her. Yeah. Beyond what her prognosis was. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, moving towards, it feels like undoing a really kind of important emotion. Let's just take a moment just to breathe and just mm. just take stock because what I'm going to play you now is something that I, you know, let's let's. Okay, lighten the mood and let's let's maybe have a laugh. But it might be the kind of laugh that we have that's a little bit like when someone drags their nails down a down a oh chalk. Oh God, board. what is it? Um, so are we, are, we, are we ready for this? Are we it's ready not for this? Boris doing something it's, silly? No, 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 no. It's not Boris. It's what potentially it's worse than that for you, Nat. Do you want? Should we? Nothing worse than Boris. Should we check it out? Not Matt Hancock. him doing the um the barbie should we watch it once more is he what is that it's a tiktok of him miming ryan gosling Why? Does that, does that, He's Javon not Jordan, raising money for dyslexia F, again, is F, he? FFS. The Evening Standard says, Matt Hancock's painful Ryan Gosling impression, a new level of cringe or viral genius. Um, but do you remember the horror? Do you remember when he came out of the jungle thinking he was hugely popular? Because actually he had gone viral with young people. So he thought he was going to sell millions of books. And of course, none of them are the least bit interested in no. the book. So you can have these numbers, but what is it actually doing for him? This this this, this, this is a piece. This, just make it stop, says Siobhan. Oh, no. There's a piece. It, this piece is very funny, actually, in the Evening Standard. It says, there's, there's, it starts with, the more you watch it, the more questions keep coming. 
What did exactly. he think he'd achieved by lip syncing to the Barbie movies and he couldn't even lip sync properly? Is his strange Ryan Gosling cover really what he thinks his constituents in West Suffolk are looking for? Was his partner, Gina, the brains of camera woman behind this latest stunt? And if so, what was she thinking? I suppose many people might ask that of you, darling. But um, yeah, what what was he trying trying to achieve? It's not hardly doing po- body positivity, was it? It's just very, very, very embarrassing. And it's just not... when you think he can not embarrass himself anymore, he does. Chain H. Read, I thought he'd gone read away. The room, Hank. Well, I he has. He's on some weird. Why is he back? Well, what beach is that? It's not. It's not a very. I'm not. Wait, don't worry. I'm going to turn the audio off. It's probably somewhere extremely lush, oh, and he tried to find an ugly bit. Oh, do you think? That's Absolutely. What, look. Where is that? He's got a tan, so he's not here. It's a very yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a grubby old beach, though, isn't it? Yeah, but he's found a grubby bit. Oh, he's fun. right, has he? Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's the... really he's really pleased with himself, though, guys. I think he must have an awful lot of friends that just find him funny and encourage him. Well, maybe he just doesn't care. Somebody needs to tell him the truth. He's def- he definitely scared the pants off of me with this TikTok, says Ty. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I'd quite happily forgotten about him, says Creator Holly. Please make it stop, says Sue yeah. Carol. Oh, there you go. There you go, guys. All right. Well, uh, we're going to see you incredibly, well, much earlier than normal tomorrow. What time is it? 8 o'clock. 8.30. 8.30. Okay. Um, so we'll see you in the morning. Uh, Elliot, Elliot Gonzalez. morning. Elliot Gonzalez says, we're all, oh, important news. Tell them about Curly Cooks. We've got it wrong. We've been saying Thursday. Oh, yeah. Live Curly Cooks curry night tomorrow. We won't tomorrow. be on on Saturday because Dean is going away. So it's going to be a live Curly Cooks tomorrow. Curry night, seven o'clock. Fantastic, curry night. All right, so do join us then. And Elliot says, hi, Elliot, we're all talking about him now, uh, which he'll love. Don't think he cares about sentiment, all of it negative. I thought he disappeared too. Yeah, I thought he had. Pink lady says,